Luke chapter 9 I'm just gonna look at verse 14 here for they were about there were about 5,000 men and he said to his disciples make them sit down in groups of 50 and they did so and he made them all sit down and he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven he blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude and they all ate and were filled and 12 baskets of leftover fragments were taken up by them we're talking about seed power because God has given you things in seed form when you ask for a miracle God gives the miracle to you in seed form when you ask for a blessing he gives it to you in seed form and most people do not recognize the blessing that God actually gives to them because the blessing is in seed form I cannot tell you how many people fail to recognize the disguise of a seed but God uses the seed to dis disguise it just to test our hearts to see where we are that if you are faithful over that which is little he'll make you ruler over that which is much he's just testing us with the seed principle and, and, and I want to talk to you about ways to be able to maximize your harvest the first thing in maximizing your harvest uh, is, 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 is the atmosphere in which you sow that's about where you sow where you sow the atmosphere into which you sow and sometimes when you're sowing on certain grounds you can sow into an atmosphere and the ground may not quite be right but sometimes if you just leave that seed on the ground uh, and you've done all that you could do with it you throw your hands up at it you leave that seed on the ground the seed is incorruptible it is incorruptible that means that it never fails to produce a harvest and there might have to come storms and different things to break up that ground but later on down the road all of the multiplication power that was in the seed originally is still in the seed and something else will happen after you're long gone you didn't even think that the knucklehead was listening to you and then you'll discover down the road that the things that they were speaking in when it looked like they were tuning you out was actually soaking in and sometimes you can't tell until way down the road that what you were planting into the atmosphere of the garden of their minds and into their hearts was actually taking root but it took time in order for that thing to happen but you've got to sow into the right atmosphere don't waste your time sowing seed into infertile ground don't sow on rocky things sow on those things that have already gone through their breaking experience the second thing is that you have to sow with the right attitude attitude deals with the climate into which you sow there are some people if they have a bad attitude they're really cold-hearted individuals and sometimes the seed that God has given you is a tropical seed and it will not go in a frigid arctic environment and you have to plant it in a warm place so it's about the attitude or the climate of actually where you sow the seed the third thing it's it's aptitude, aptitude, aptitude deals with your ability. This is your ability to be able to work the seed. George Washington Carver took a peanut and because of his aptitude, his skill level, he was able to develop over 300 products with the peanut because of his aptitude. Now another person couldn't have done that if they didn't have the aptitude no matter how good the soil is. You've got to have aptitude. Aptitude can always be developed. I don't care what it, whatever it is, if it's in singing, if it's in playing an instrument, if it's dancing, if it's working in brick masonry, if it's plumbing work, if it's doing somebody's hair, you can always learn something to increase your skill. I don't care what it is, you can increase your aptitude. The more that your aptitude is increased, the greater productivity that you can get out of what, you, what, what God has given to you. The greater aptitude that you have. When you can increase your aptitude and it will make the harvest out of which you produce it will make the harvest become more bountiful if you'll increase your aptitude this is how you sow this is the skill level in how you sow when you got aptitude the aptitude will deal with sowing not only in the right kind of soil but knowing how to fertilize soil that needs to be uh, fertilized where you can fortify the soil with various things the mineral deposits that need to go in here the, the the super growers that can actually make it grow in less time you learn how to manipulate seed to make seed more resilient to pest more resilient to dry conditions there are certain things that will only grow if it's the right climate it's got to be either too hot or too cold and if, if it's if it's got too much water some plants won't flourish I grew up you know growing sprouts we had a sprouter and a sprouter is where you can put seeds of things in a tray with no soil at all did you know that there are some seeds that will grow with no soil 
I'm a living witness because I used to harvest them myself. I used to grow them and I would put these seeds in a tray and the only thing that it was a three-tier tray and, and I would pour water over them and actually put them under the cabinet it would grow without sunlight did you know that there are things that will grow with no sunlight did, did you know that there are things that will grow with no soil I used to grow them full of nutrition and we would then put them on our sandwiches and put them on our salads full of life full of live enzymes and we would grow it with no sun and with no uh, with with no uh, soil no soil and no sun why are you making excuses about what you don't have my god if you realize the power of the seed that god gives you and start mealy mouth and listen about that thing you might start complaining well i don't have the budget that they have you don't have to have the budget that they have you might be like a david coming up against uh, goliath you don't have anything but a cornbread plan and they got a cake plan but you take your cornbread plan and you work that to the best of your ability you may not have a full armor suit and a sword and shield and buckler but you've got a rock and a rag and you know how to come up against something that is so much bigger than who you are dealing with systems of this world and God will give you if you've got aptitude enough skill to be able to knock it right between the eye and they won't know what hit them and then you can take their sword and decapitate them and God will give your enemies over into your hands when you have sufficient aptitude in your life the fourth thing that will increase the power of your seed is affection 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 there must be a nurturing of the seed you can't just birth a child and never touch them and never love them and never affirm them and the way that children spell love is T-I-M-E it is not M-O-N-E-Y, it is T-I-N-M-E, time. You invest time through nurturing words, through showing care. And let me say this to you, that when a child least deserves love, that's when he needs it most. When a child least deserves love, that's when he needs it the most. And so you have to give affection to whatever it is that God has given to you. Did you know what the Bible said Jesus taught us? That where your treasure is, that there will your heart or your affections be also because if you don't put affections with where treasure is the treasure is meaningless to you they have to go with it your affections in your heart you've got to speak loving nurturing things if a child is born and never touched with human skin contact the child will die and everything else is perfectly normal about the child but if he doesn't get enough love it'll wither and die It'll wither and die. You'll be surprised. So you've got to be able to nurture your seed with affection. I like to see the, 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 the gardens of those individuals where you've got them and folks will label them a certain way because they talk to their plants. But they nurture them. And they have found that plants respond favorably to certain kinds of music even when you nurture them. Your children are seed and they must be nurtured in the right environment with the right kinds of words, the affection that comes from your life. When you have the affection, one of the things that affection will do, this, this, uh, this affection is a nurturing. Uh, my dad, I told you, was a country boy. Uh, you, you, know, you, know, you can take country boys out of the country, but you can't always take the country. How many of y'all know folks in the city that's still country? I mean folks in the city still eating chitlins <laughs> with hot sauce and mustard and all, you know. And you'd be surprised, and my daddy came from the country and had us with a plow out there plowing up the ground. But after we got the seed, that wasn't the hard part. What really aggravated me was the tedious nurturing, the affection part of having to go out there and get on my knees out there in the, in the ground and pull weeds up. Do you know when you planted a seed that there are weeds that's trying to pollute your children and choke out their life and choke out their values and choke out their principle and you got to constantly pull weeds up around the things that were sown in the ground to produce fruit? You got to constantly weed them because there's something that is going. But you, had you ever noticed that weeds spring up of themselves? Nobody goes around sowing weed seeds. You sow fruit seeds, but you don't have to sow weed seeds. Any time that you leave seed to itself, it is a form of hatred. 
I don't care what it is. Whatever you sow and invest in, and then if you wash your hands of it and don't ever go back to nurture it, you never come to speak positive, affirming words to it. Whatever it is that God gives you as a blessing must be nurtured. I don't care whether it is a business. I don't care whether it is a marriage. I don't care whether it is a child. I don't care whether it is an idea. It must be nurtured by the affection that comes from your heart. It's a part of loving passionately what God has given to you. And if you're not doing it through the nurturing, it will be feeble. And it might look pretty for a season. But if it's not being nurtured with the proper amount of water, it'll turn brown and die on you. And so you have to nurture it. So there must be an affection that comes. Then the fifth element is actually achievement. Achievement. Because the harvest, this is the harvest of what you sow. The harvest of what you sow. The universal law of sowing and reaping says that you reap what you, what you sow. You don't reap what you intended to sow. You only reap what you sow. You don't reap what you tried to sow, you reap what you sow. So if you don't like your harvest, change what you're, what you're doing with your seed. Every seed, please understand this, every seed goes through a dark season before it sprouts. Every seed goes through a dark season before it sprouts. I don't want you to become discouraged because there will be things that will be happening in your life and it will look like nothing is happening, like this thing is buried, like this thing is dead. The devil will tell you that what you sowed is dead. What you sowed is dead. What you sowed is dead. But let me tell you this, there is a difference between burying something and planting something. What is buried stays there. What is planted is coming back up. And you sow seed, you sow seed, you plant seed. You don't bury seed because seed is coming back up. But when you first cover it, it will go through a season of darkness where it doesn't look like anything is happening. But don't be discouraged. You got to trust him when you can't trace him. You got to trust him when you don't see anything happening. I mean, when you've been speaking this thing and there's no visible evidence that anything that you're saying is going to come to pass, it's a dark season, but there's always darkness after you release seed before there is a sprouting of that seed. And let me tell you this, that when Jesus talked to them and he said to them, sit down in groups of 50, the reason that he was positioning them in groups of 50 is because Jesus was a military commander and he was preparing the Lord's army. It was organized and God was saying to him, uh, I'm, I'm setting up an army, but I got to feed my army so my army will have strength to be able to do battle. And so he was organizing them for a miracle. And let me tell you this, that the miracle that happened here, this miracle happened by the hand of Jesus, but it didn't happen in the hands of Jesus. It happened by his hand, but it didn't happen in his hand. And there are miracles that are getting ready to happen here today that will happen by his hand, but they don't happen in his hand, it's going to happen in your hand. Now let me tell you this, when he took the seed of the fish and, and the bread, that wasn't enough to feed them, it was only a seed to be sown. And so when he did that, he gave it to his disciples and his disciples gave it to the multitude. May I tell you this? You'll have to see a parallel today. You'll have to receive that what's coming from my mouth out of the ninth chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, that this is coming from the mouth of Jesus. So you've got to receive this as though I'm giving fish and bread to you. I'm a type of Jesus here to you today. And you are the disciples. You are not the multitude. I know you look like the 5,000. You look just like the 5,000. But you are not the 5,000. You are the disciples. The 5,000 are out here in the city. You have come in here to get something that comes from the hand of Jesus that will then go to the city. He wanted to break you off something and when you break it out of your hands and share it out of your mouth, that's where the miracle happens. That's where the multiplication happens. It happens by his hand, but in your hand. It's not until you take it and then give it that God begins to actually multiply. It didn't multiply it until it began to leave the disciples' hand. It happened in the hands of disciples. The disciples are those that hear and do the words of Jesus. If you hear his words and do them and then hand it out to somebody else, break them off some of what you've been getting. Don't get fat on the word. Get out and exercise. Give it away. You'll reinforce your knowledge. 
teach it to somebody else. As I'm breaking it to you, you take it and give it to the city. That's the multitude on your job, in your neighborhood, in your family. Break it and give it to somebody who's not here. Feed the multitude. That's the heart cry of Jesus. He wants you to feed the multitude. And then here is the principle here. Is that you never, ever give what has not first been blessed. You never give what has not first been blessed. You never give what has not first been blessed. If you give something that has not been blessed by God, it won't be a blessing to them. You never give what has not been blessed, so it must always be blessed. When God spoke to Adam and Eve in the second chapter, well, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says, God said, He blessed them. He blessed them. God blessed them first. He blessed them. And then he said, be fruitful. Because God didn't want them to bear fruit of something that was not blessed. He didn't want to reproduce something that was crazy. Something that was wild. Something that was unbridled. He wanted to reproduce something that was blessed. Why would you create something that is imperfect and then mass produce it and you know that it's flawed? Get it blessed from God. Get it blessed before you give it. Get it blessed. Jesus blessed it and then he gave it. He blessed it and then he gave it. He blessed it and then he gave it. He blessed it and then he gave it. And so you have to actually get it blessed. That whatever it is that you have blessed, you want to get your time blessed. If you want, before you try to multiply your time, get, get your time blessed by giving your time to God. Get your ideas blessed by giving your ideas to God. Get your children blessed by giving your children back to God. Get your money blessed by giving the first tenth back to God and that blesses the ninety. It blesses the first portion, the firstborn that comes out of the womb belongs to the Lord. If, if you ever get that first one, why would you want to reproduce a, a wild thing that you can't even handle and then your solution is to go and produce another wild one? I wish that we'd figure out how to get the first child blessed first before we go into the next one. I, I'm afraid that our population would be so small because people would not reproduce and we'd have a higher quality of, of, of a society because we have people that got the first one blessed. If you can get the first one doing right, they'll set an example for all the rest of the children. If you can get the blessings of God where the firstborn is, is, is serving God, if they love God with all of their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and a, and a disciple of Jesus Christ where you are reproducing in them what God has produced in you, because you gave them of what God had given to you. You've got to take the stuff that you have gotten from Jesus' hand and get it to another generation. Part of that multitude is another generation. It is another generation. Don't just give it to folks that just look like you who are in your peers, that you're, you're your same age. There's a whole other generation that so desperately, desperately needs godly values. They need the morals that, that are in the word of God. They need what we have and we've got to replenish. There were some commands that he gave in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God blessed them and then he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, subdue and replenish. Because if you don't learn to subdue it, you'll never be able to replenish. And there are certain things that's got to be replenished in our society that has been stripped out the values, the honor, the respect, have to be replenished back into our society. And when we replenish those values, something powerful happens when you replenish the values of God back into another generation. And so I want you to see very clearly that you never should give anything that has not first been blessed. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all of these other things will be added unto you. Does you know that when you get with God and spend time with God that as, as Paul would often say in writing the churches, grace and peace be not added to you but multiplied to you through the knowledge of him. Grace and peace be multiplied. We are stepping into a dim dimension now in, where the spirit of wisdom and knowing will come into your lives in a greater measure and that you will be multiplied in grace, in grace and peace. There are so many homes right now and relationships that are devoid of the peace of God. So many minds that are absent of God's peace. Grace and peace be multiplied, multiplied, multiplied unto you. Grace and peace be multiplied. Get it blessed first from God. Get it blessed by submitting this thing back to God and said, God, this belongs back to you. Remember the whole process that something starts inward as a seed then you birth it outward you birth it outward and what you birth outward 
you've got to now lift upward to God and say, God, now breathe on this thing. And then what goes upward is then has the ability to now go onward. It has the ability now to go onward. And God will send something on only because you have lifted that thing up to him and gotten it blessed by God to say, God, breathe on this thing. Breathe on my idea. Don't just contrive something out of your own mind and then ask God to bless it. You better get it from God so that it is blessed. If it comes from God, if it comes from the heart of God, it goes to the heart of God. And so there's a blessing that's already built into it. And so get it blessed. And then the final thing that I want to say to you is this. Is that your real blessing of multiplication happens when you give. It happens when you release the seed and sow it so that God can grow it. It only happens when you're able to surrender that thing and give that seed to God. You've got to give it. You've got to give it. And, and, and let me just tell you, not everybody is even in a position where they uh, can give it. But only what is given away can multiply. Only what is given has the ability to multiply. It will not multiply if it is not sown. It will not multiply if it is not invested. It will not multiply unless it is broken. And I want you to understand very, very clearly here the pattern of Jesus Christ, that he took them in the same way that he took Jesus out of the portals of glory. And then he blessed them. He blessed Jesus when they brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. But then they broke him. He broke him in the wilderness. He broke him. When he was fasting, he broke him in the Garden of Gethsemane. He broke him on the cross. But then he gave him as the greatest Savior that the world has ever seen. Did you know that you are not ready to be given until you have first been broken? And the greatest temptation is for you to quit right when you're in the broken, breaking stage. Right when God is breaking you. But it is not until you have been broken, you've got to be broken so that what God has placed in you can come out of you. You've got to be broken so that what God has placed in you, that God will take you and then he will bless you with salvation. And after you get saved, it looks like all hell breaks loose. You're broken. And it's after you have gone through your breaking experience that God says, now, I've got somebody now who's ready to be given. Because whenever God is going to make you productive, he's not ready to give you until you are first broken. And if you've never had a headache and never been nauseated because something in this world is eating you and making you sick, you're not ready to be given. If your heart has never been broken, you don't know how to have compassion on those who have been broken. He's a healer of the brokenhearted. And God wants to give you. Don't think that God lets you go through everything that you went through just for you to have trauma in your life. God takes the broken and makes the broken masters at mending. And it is not until you have been broken that God has taken you and he has blessed you with gifts and creativity, but now he breaks you in the waiting process. There is nothing more bro breaking in your life than to be blessed, gifted, and got to wait. Gifted and folks don't recognize your gift. Gifted and not given the doors of opportunity open to you and you're frustrated and you are broken during that time. But just realize that God is what's waiting on you to get broken so that the gift that he put in you that he could get out. There's a difference between a gift that comes out of a vessel that has been broken and one that's gifted and never been broken. It's a different sound. I can't tell you, but it does something to the instrument when there's been a breaking process that has gone on and pain has been there. God cannot change your character without pain. And there's some things that God wants to do in you. And God has to get you ready. I know you're wondering, when, Lord, when, Lord? God, when are you going to release me? When, God? When is my time coming? God says, hold your hope. Hold your hope in the fullness of time. I feel like it's the time, and it looks like it, and the deal comes on the table, and then it falls through. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever gone through the brokenness of a disappointment of something that looked like God's answer and, and blessing into your life only to slip through your fingers. And the brokenness of having the deal on the table and then you couldn't close the house.
and the job didn't come through and you ran for this and it didn't happen for you this time. And God says, I'm getting you ready. I'm getting you ready to be given. Because when I give you, there's going to be a story. And, and listen, the story that God wants to write in your life will be so magni magnificent so that before you get there, if you tell the people that, that are with you at that time, they'll never believe that you're going to where you say you're going. And then once you get there, the folks that will be with you on that level, they will never believe that you came from where you say you came. And God's going to make it. I'm just telling you that God is getting ready. He's got, a, he's got some disciples here in the house that he's ready to give. And only the ones who have been broken, not the ones merely that have been ta taken, not only the ones that have been blessed, but the ones who have been broken, and the greatest time that the devil tempts you to give up and to curse God and die is in your breaking. And if you can hold through the breaking like Job, God will give you twice as much. He will give you double for your trouble. It is a promise. It is a promise. And I'm just telling you here that some of you have not understood the maturation process of God in your life, but God was maturing you. When you're too young with things, you, you know, you look at other folks and you make a whole lot of judgments with your mouth on things, but when you've gone through some stuff yourself, you stop putting your mouth on stuff so quickly. God's looking for some broken folks that know how to restore people, that know how to bring hope and healing, that understand how to minister with grace and how to take a person who has messed up and say, you know, sweetheart, God is not finished with you and let me show you how you can take the spilling here of this, the sourness of these lemons and add some sugar and water to it, honey, and you can become a refreshing cup of water to somebody, a wonderful lemonade of, of all of this stuff that has happened to you in your life. It will fall out for the furtherance of the gospel. And I just wanted you to know that God would take you and so incredibly bless your life that a shift and a change it's happening by the power of a seed, seed power that is in you. People cannot tell what you will become by the seed which you carry right now. And as you are broken, God will take the seed that he has trusted in your heart and release it. And it will go through a dark period always before it sprouts. But when it sprouts, look out. Your redemption draws nigh. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.